Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis. We deep dive into financials and we also highlight all the key risk and triggers going forward. Well, let's get straight to the first talk today. My colleague Sonal, she gives us this very special deep dive on landmark cars. Let's go across. Inside Out today is going to focus on Landmark Cars, which is an automotive retailer in the country and deals with various brands, be it Mercedes, be it Jeep, BYD, Renault, uh, some of the commercial vehicles for Ashok Leyland as well. There's Volkswagen, Honda as well for the company. Uh, they have around 117 outlets, uh, 10 states and around 28 cities as well in which they function. In terms of the financials of the company now, let's talk about them. Their performa revenues, they've increased from around 1956 crore rupees in FI19 to levels of 4,500 crore rupees in FI23. And at the halfway mark, they've done revenues of around 20, uh, 2054 crore rupees. These are performa revenues. We'll discuss it in greater detail what that exactly means. But in terms of EBITDA, they have grown from 120 crore rupees in FI21 to 250 crore rupees in FI23. And at the halfway mark, at 104 crore rupees. At the halfway mark, the profits are at, at around 28 crore rupees. This compares with FY21 profits of 11 crore rupees and FY23 profits of around 85 crore rupees. What is the next thing that we are watching out for? Well, the demand depends on demand that we are seeing in the luxury car market and that is something that we will be tracking very closely. And the working capital cycle of the company, ex-Mercedes, how do they track it, how do they manage it, when the demand is weak and a lot more. We will understand all from the management in this conversation and we will take a deep dive. everything about Landmark Cars, what the company does, what is the business model and the strategy going forward as well. We have with us Mr. Sanjay Thakkar, who is the Chairman, Promoter and Executive Director at the company. Mr. Thakkar, such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us and explaining to us and our viewers in detail about Landmark Cars. So, you know, that's exactly my first question. What is your business model really like and what is the revenue split? Uh, how is it different for Mercedes because that is one of your biggest clients as well? So we have uh, basically two pillars of business. One is the sales and the other is the after sales or the service. So the sales comprises of a sale of cars where, we, where the company makes, gets a commission. There is an insurance premium. 90% of the people who buy the car buy insurance from us. And then there is a finance. Most of the guys in India, 75% of the guys who buy the cars take fi finance. Mm. So we get a revenue stream, a commission from banks. Uh, for that and then we sell accessories you will see a lot of accessories in our uh, showroom and that's what people uh, end up buying too so that is the first revenue stream and then uh, there is a, another revenue stream of after sales which comprises of uh, accident repairs it ex the periodic maintenance and general repairs which is a, a very high margin recurring annuity type of a business that we uh, do so you spoke about Mercedes. Tell us, how does revenues, how do revenues work there? How are they different from the other brands? So in case of Mercedes-Benz, the after-sales business continues the way it always did. Uh, the, in the sales uh, uh, part of the business, we get commission every month on the cars that we uh, end up selling. We don't make the margin of buying and selling, but a commission uh, comes straight in our books. Now the advantage is that there is no working capital requirement. Uh, for Mercedes uh, part of the business and that's why the ROC uh, looks better and it, it, it becomes much healthier. Okay, so what is the margin difference between Mercedes and non-Mercedes? Uh, uh, so on a, a gross level uh, basis, uh, one needs to see the margin and then take out in normal business uh, what we do with say a Honda or a Volkswagen or any other, there is a, an interest cost hmm. uh, and there is a discount element. Correct. So actually what one should be looking at is what is it that we retain at the end of the day. 
So with Mercedes new model, uh, it is a better situation where we do not have any interest and uh, any discount uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So the uh, gross margin uh, is not the exact way of looking at uh, the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in sales, uh, we look at approximately 2 to 3% of uh, retained margin. On Mercedes, on uh, on all the things are blended. All, okay, on blended, it's around two to three percent is the retain earnings, yeah, so to yeah, say, that yeah. you get there. So, how does it differ if you do your sales from new vehicles versus the existing ones? Does it matter there as well? Because analysts say that if you increase your new vehicle sales, that would increase your ROE, or that would incre increase your retain earnings as well. So, uh, there is a kind of uh, operating leverage that we uh, are looking at. So, the same showroom needs to generate more sales. Uh, and once the sales goes up, and which is what India is all about, uh, so this showroom where we started, uh, we have been significantly increasing this the throughput of uh, the showroom. Now that's where the growth will come from. That's where the operating leverage is uh, will kick in. Hmm, got it. So Mercedes is still the bigger client for you. That uh, how much? Is. How can you split the revenues uh, in terms so, of brand? So uh, pr from the pro forma revenue basis, that's what we will have to look yeah. at. Uh, it is our uh, biggest uh, brand. Uh, clearly, it is the biggest brand. Approximately 35 to 40 percent of the group's uh, hmm. pro forma revenue hmm. uh, crum comes from Mercedes Benz. But this number keeps on changing uh, year on year, depending on what what new brands we add. Uh, what new locations we add, some new models of the existing brands coming in and, and that, that's not what we typically look at but as we speak Mercedes is our clearly our uh, biggest uh, franchise. So you know I'm going to ask you about uh, um, the plans that you have, you spoke about outlets, so what the expansion plans are, you put out a release recently as well but you know uh, a luxury market is still around 1% of the passenger vehicle market, around 45,000 units sold last. How do you think this market will grow? What are the trends that you've seen in last couple of years? Because you've actually catered to this industry for more than two decades. What are the changes that you've seen in how customer changes in uh, buying patterns? So uh, luxury starts where necessity ends. I mean, that's what uh, people talk about. And uh, the mood of the nation is buoyant today. Uh, this is, uh, people believe, and I, I think rightly so, that it is India's time now. And once, if that's the mood, then this 1% penetration is a joke. Really, uh, we can't be at 1% penetration, 45,000 in all uh, luxury cars is really the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. We have seen that the, uh, the base is getting broader. We actually had a pyramid uh, kind of a thing, which uh, we, you have seen that the uh, vehicles above 10 lakhs are selling many, much more than the small cars. So this is where uh, we believe that uh, this 1% can become significantly large. It is 7% in China. Uh, uh, of luxury car penetration, they sell 2 million vehicles, we are 40,000, 2% of what they do. Yeah. So we believe this is a, a long journey that we have started and uh, it's good to be at the right place, right time. So you are seeing, uh, what kind of growth levels are you seeing, if you can compare it over... So the luxury, luxury car market has grown uh, twice, thrice as fast as the passenger car market. And the belief, the popular belief is that that is something that will continue and for uh, maybe a decade or so and all the luxury car OEs are focused now on India. This is one of the few shining uh, beacons in the uh, world uh, uh, kind of uh, ecosystem and we are seeing additional focus uh, coming on India. Okay, so you know you spoke about how it's easier to manage working capital with Mercedes because you do not hold that inventory with you or you do not show it in your books so to say. Yes. Uh, how does working capital generally work for other brands? How, uh, what are the working capital days and <clears throat> is there an industry standard here when it comes to luxury cars and the working capital? So the working capital comprises mainly of the uh, stock of cars that we will hold. We will have also working capital on uh, the demo cars, the test drive cars that we need to hold. Now that's the sales part and in the after sales we have the inventory of uh, spare parts. Mm. That's what we hold, which is not in uh, rupee terms, not that meaningful. Uh, but for new cars, uh, for a healthier balance sheet, uh, one must look at uh, less than one month of new car mm. uh, stock. Mm. And uh, the uh, demo cars uh, comprise generally around 12 to 13 days uh, of your uh, sales. That, that, that's something uh, what one needs to figure out. Okay, interesting. So. Uh, let's talk about your expansion because you've entered the southern market now with, yes. your, with your recent expansion plans. Um, how do you choose which market to go to, whether you, the showroom there should be on rent or you should own that particular property? What is the strategy here? So uh, 
uh, in India, the rental yields are significantly lower than the interest rates. Mm -hmm. So, Landmark has a philosophy since the time we started, has believed in renting places, paying the market rent and running a profitable business. This, this has, we have been an outlier uh, in the industry where people generally want to buy real estate. We have not been that. So, out of the 117 locations that we have now, only two are owned for Landmark. Okay. Uh, so, th the philosophy is not to buy property at all for faster uh, expansion and to track profitable growth, per store growth. And uh, 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 southern markets is something that we always wanted to be. Hyderabad has been a uh, uh, go-to market for us. It's amongst the fastest growing luxury uh, uh, car uh, market, not only cars, but for luxury goods, I would say. So I believe that once now we have entered with Mercedes-Benz, we will do meaningful things over here. To answer your question as to how do we choose the market, we choose the market based on the growth potential uh, that, the, uh, that it, uh, the market offers. Uh, and uh, the rentals, uh, what is the per square foot rental? Mm. Okay, interesting. So, uh, there's a lot to talk about your expansion plans, but I have to take a look at the workshop as well because this is an integrated facility. So, Absolutely. let's go there and understand more about the other side of the business as sure. well. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> here at the workshop tell us more about how big is it as a part of your overall revenues what is the strategy with margins here and outlook going forward so the workshops are a very meaningful uh, part of every uh, auto retailers business in India a uh, 70 percent of our uh, uh, revenue was sales and 30 percent was after sales uh, some time back but the margin is absolutely reverse we make make 40 percent gross 18% EBITDA margin uh, in this business. This has been growing at 20% CAGR for us uh, for the last nine years. And we don't see this uh, kind of uh, stopping anytime soon because the more cars we add on the streets, the more they will come back to us. The uh, authorized dealerships are the place where customers go for their service, their accident repair. This integrated facility also does uh, accident repair work uh, where there is a high quality paint booth and a lot of other equipment that the general local garages would never have. Okay. So, you know, when we're talking about after uh, aftermarket sales service, there's insurance that you spoke about as well. How do take rates differ there? Do you have revision in take rates in different segments on a yearly basis or on a half yearly basis? So, uh, a as a company, we have several products uh, that basically keep the customers uh, loyal to us. There is an annual maintenance contract there are extended warranties which are there. Uh, the uh, customers uh, come, uh, our experience is that till around seven years or so, uh, customer keep, customers keep on coming to the authorized uh, dealerships. And uh, as the car park grows, this is something that we believe is an annuity type of a business which will keep on going and going. The uh, margins broadly remain the same. So pre-owned cars, that's also a big part of your overall strategy, yes. right? Uh, you've guided for 100 crore of revenues. Uh, how is it in the overall picture? Uh, what are the plans here in terms of, say, CapEx or the brands that you would add here? So, uh, as we spoke, we have, as of now, two pillars of business. One is the sales and one is the after sales. We want to add the third pillar, which is the pre-owned cars, uh, as a meaningful business. Uh, in India, uh, that business for auto dealerships currently isn't a meaningful part. We want to change that. And what, what we believe is that we will be focusing in a very uh, specific way of selling our own brand cars rather than uh, going to the open market and spraying and praying. So we will be focusing over here in this facility of buying and selling pre-owned Mercedes cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, this business can actually grow significantly large because there is a dearth of a reputed uh, certified uh, vehicles uh, which, which is backed by uh, 
organized retail and that is a void we will want to fill how big would that market be if you can give us uh, uh, in idea? india the uh, pre owned car market is 1.3 times currently uh, okay. than the new car market so by a rough estimate it is over 5 million vehicles okay uh, so this is uh, uh, we are just scratching the surface of this and this over a period of time will become significantly meaningful for us so that's a big opportunity that great, you are great tracking big opportunity yeah so there'll be a lot of capex plans in that case you know you're talking about expansion into the southern market you've opened uh, new opportunities for brands like mg as well uh, give us a sense of what capex plans are and what would that do to your free cash flows so uh, the good part is that we are sitting on decent amount of cash we uh, raised around 150 crores in the ipo uh, last year uh, in the full year we generated around 120 crores of uh, cash uh, that pace continues even even in the current year and the uh, capex for us has always been funded through internal accruals we have never uh, borrowed or don't intend to borrow uh, for uh, investment so that is well taken care of uh, as far as the pre owned car uh, uh, inventory is concerned that's the only thing that we need to be focused on we have allocated only around 25 crore rupees mm. uh, to for to buying and selling of these pre owned cars as a, a working capital as we sell we will buy so it is that is the uh, model that we are uh, uh, looking at uh, we are comfortably placed uh, as far as the cash is concerned uh, to take care of our expansion. Okay, comfortably placed as far as your cash is concerned. Would an inorganic opportunity excite landmark cars? It excites us uh, no end. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we have been doing successfully, I would say, uh, for the last uh, 20 years or so. And 30% uh, of uh, the outlets that we have had uh, are acquired outlets. So there is uh, enough and more opportunity in the market and we'll be very happy to kind of push our uh, pedal on that. Your average revenue per vehicle service, it has increased to 25,000 versus levels of 22,000 last year. Where do you see that going since you're saying the annuity business and you know this, these are predictable revenues? So what Landmark and, uh, has been doing is to uh, focus on car care products, on value added services that the customers uh, really want and they never got it from the authorized dealerships. Mm -hmm. We have also been cutting down uh, our uh, business of small cars. We have shut some outlets where uh, we were, uh, the, the per car throughput was not so meaningful for us. Mm -hmm. That has taken it up. We are focusing on premium and luxury products and the mix uh, once it changes uh, in favor of the luxury and premium, this revenue uh, will keep on going up. We, are, we don't have a number to tell you now, but that's what we are uh, focused on all the time. All right, that was a deep dive into landmark cars. But it's time to slip into a short break. We'll be back with another interesting stock. DCM Sriram Industries, that's the stock on our Swatlight segment. You don't go anywhere.